My next presentation deals with the universe, how it was created. And some scientists believe that our universe was created inside another universe. I will try to explain this perspective. There is several hypotheses on the beginning of the universe. The oldest one, and still making the round among most people, it's what I call the God hypothesis. Basically, God created the universe. That's it. One that came out recently is what I call the Matrix Hypothesis, based on a movie. And the idea here is that some alien has a super duper computer and it's running a program and the program is the universe itself. So basically the Matrix Hypothesis is the God Hypothesis with a computer. There is the Nothing Hypothesis, in other words, there was nothing, and then the universe came into being. Another hypothesis that made the rounds for a while, it's called the steady state hypothesis, which is believed, which believes that matter, the universe has always been and always will be the same. And the idea behind it is that matter is, as the universe expands, matter is created in between space and that matter slowly becomes stars and stars become gal galaxies and galaxies expand. It was developed because scientists didn't like the Big Bang Theory. There is the oscillating hypothesis, which is the universe began as a Big Bang and started expanding and gravity is going to stop the expansion and pull everything back to a point and at that point the Big Bang will reoccur and expand then gravity will stop the expansion and bring it back to a point it's oscillating back and forth but the one that's mostly proposed by scientists is what's called a big bang theory and this theory is supported by relativity and astronomical observations now, relativity is a successful mathematical process that describes how the universe evolved it predicts that the universe was born from a very hot and very dense point, but there was no matter inside of it. And this point is called a singularity, which is a meaningless word like dimensions or dark energy. Relativity also predicts a singularity at black hole center. Could this be a coincidence or is a universe inside a black hole? The question becomes now, what are black holes, how they form? Black holes are the last stage in the life cycle of the largest stars in the universe. It's a stage when stars exhaust the fuel in their cores and turn into supernovas. Now there are different ways that supernovas can be formed, but their formation shares certain similarities. Normally, stars fuse lighter elements into heavier ones. And in process, they produce electromagnetic energy, heat, light, X-ray, gamma rays, and so forth. For example, the sun's core fuses hydrogen, which is basically protons, into helium, thereby producing energy. Energy is critical for the star. It's what keeps the star from collapsing because gravity is pulling everything down. So in the star, there's a constant battle between gravity and the energy from fusion that's happening inside of it. Well, large stars don't just fuse hydrogen and helium. They can go on fusing carbon and nitrogen and so forth until the core is filled with iron. So somewhere along the line, eventually the star tries to fuse iron into elements. The problem is that fusing iron is an endothermic reaction. It absorbs heat. So when it starts fusing in a split second, the core cools down and shrinks. Well, without the energy supporting the star, the topmost section of the star collapses onto the core. The infolium material does have hydrogen and nitrogen and helium and so forth. So there's energy in there. The infolium material suddenly comes down and it's compressed 
and in that compression it ignites. The explosion expels the topmost section of the star outward, upwards, and compresses the core. So if you look at a supernova through a telescope, you can see the explosion happening, you can see matter coming off of it. But if you try to look the inside, what's happening inside the star itself, well, that's invisible. The core now becomes disrupted space. And it's a black hole. Physics can't explain this disrupted space. But there are certain properties we know about black holes. Number one, they're not made up of matter. There are no protons, electrons, neutrons, nothing in there. But the gravity, it's still there which kind of creates a problem because gravity is created by matter bending space. So a black hole has no matter, but it can still bend space. The black hole is surrounded by an event horizon, which is just a shell, a magical shell, a shell basically, and an edge, an invisible edge from which light can't even escape anymore. It, it rotates because it was, it was, the star was rotating to begin with, there is no time inside a black hole. Time stopped inside a black hole. And there's that magical thing called the singularity at the center. So now I'd like to speculate on what's happening inside the star that's blowing up. And i like to compare the supernova explosion to an atomic bomb explosion. In an atomic bomb, the core of it is surrounded by explosive, and the core is either plutonium or uranium-235. When the explosive blows up, it forms a shock wave, and the shock wave compresses the core and starts a splitting of plutonium atoms. So the question now becomes, if a chemical reaction can help split atoms, what can a supernova do to the nucleus of atoms or to protons and neutrons themselves. The shock wave, as I see it, the shock wave created by the supernova explosion races toward the star's core. If it's a relatively small supernova explosion, not the supernova explosions are small, but it's a relatively small supernova explosion, the star's proton lose positron, the positive electron, and create neutrons. So what's left behind is a neutron star. If it's a larger supernova, as the shock wave races toward the star's core, it breaks down the nucleons themselves into actions, which are what protons and neutrons are created, made of. And that destruction releases a great deal of binding energy. It releases the energy that held the protons and neutrons together. Problem is that energy can't escape into space. And like I said before, actions are the particles that form the fabric of space and matter itself. So in front of the shock wave, you have regular matter. You have protons, neutrons, nuclei and so forth. Behind the shock wave, there's the axions that were released and the temperature and density of these action skyrockets. When the supernova shock wave reaches the center of the star, then the space that encloses the star is totally disrupted. It is now a black hole and you have very high action density inside the black hole. And there can be any time inside the black hole itself. We're now transitioning from looking at the black hole from the, inside, from the inside and what can possibly be happening to it inside to observing a universe being formed from the outside. So let's go back to now the shock wave. 
When the supernova shock wave reaches the center of what's now a black hole, from, if you look at it from the internal, from inside, it looks like a singularity. It looks like there's an infinite density and an infinite small point at the center of the black hole. And since there is no time, as the wave reflects back, it appears to move instantaneously. And this is what we call the inflation period. And we're now totally inside the universe. As the compression wave expands, like everything else, it cools and rarefies. Because it's cooling, at some point, the universe undergoes a phase change, a phase transition, which means that the axions and the energy are tied back together again to form subatomic particles. This stops the inflation period and sets the universal expansion at the speed of light. It also drops the density and temperature of space below the point where matter can be created. So from that point on, you can't have any more protons and neutrons and electrons being formed. And it sets the density of the universe that we have now, it sets the current density and starts time. Time starts again. Afterwards, the universe kept expanding at the speed of light and the cooling, it gets colder, it allows hydrogen and some helium and lithium to form. But there's a great more, a great deal of energy of hydrogen created, far more than what the scientists believe. This is called the cosmic dark age because there's matter, but there's no stars yet. So the formation of hydrogen marks the beginning of the cosmic dark age. And because of mutual gravity, gravity between atoms and hydrogen atoms, the hydrogen begins condensing into increasingly dense clouds, but not stars yet, because stars are heat engines, and heat engines work best when there's temperature difference. During this time, the temperature of space was high, which prevented clouds from igniting and creating stars. Without stars, you have these huge concentrations of hydrogen, which also drags in the axions themselves, which we call dark matter right now. Now eventually the pressure inside these clouds became too high and stars, stars have to lit up. Because there's a lot of hydrogen, these stars burn very hot and very fast, becoming huge supernovas. This process removed a great deal of hydrogen from the universe and led to the formation of huge black holes black holes that have thousands of stellar masses instead of what we have nowadays. Since the universe was a lot smaller and black holes were huge, they quickly merged together, forming supermassive black holes. And gravity from these black holes gathered axions and hydrogen, forming new stars, a new galaxy. And that's the uh, the universe continued expanding and cooling, lower mass stars were able to form and the black holes now became stellar size. In other words, black holes that have anything between four and a hundred stellar masses. None of the big black holes that were formed in the beginning of the universe. So in conclusion, compared to what's outside the entire universe is a denser, hollow, hotter, hollow sphere. It's basically a shell expanding away from the center of the black hole in another universe. So basically, this is the black hole. This is the universe itself. And it's expanding from the center point. Right here was the universe got started. And from there it expanded. So it's just a shell expanding from one point. And it's expanding inside the black hole.
when the hydrogen was formed in the in the in the, in the universe it formed everywhere simultaneously and the universe was very small at the time so stars and primitive black holes and galaxies formed everywhere pretty much simultaneously and that's why the, J, uh, the James Webb Space Telescope is now finding galaxy in the early universe because they all formed pretty much at the same time from my perspective from inside the earth we can only see an expanding bubble of space that has a radius which is half the thickness of the shell or 13.8 light years so basically what we're seeing is this is our universe right here that's what we see the entire universe is this whole piece here but we can only see this this part here which is 13.8 light years from center to the edge we can't see anything outside the universe outside our bubble and we can't see anything outside obviously so now as an afterthought we know the thickness of the shell the shell here we know the thickness of it that's about about the size of the universe but we don't know what the radius of the inside radius is or the outside radius is so if we don't know what inside and outside radius is, there's no way to know what the size of the universe is.